Hey guys, Mr. 3D here we're here, and in today's latest loadout video, I'm bringing you a loadout that's based around a very well known and well loved character within Time for 2, and his name is Viper. Now, Viper is a very dedicated pilot, a very serious and dedicated pilot. I believe he's the only character in the game that uses the military jargon or language for generally everything he does and do. From the moment he's engaging someone, to the moment he's taking damage, to the moment he generally meets us in the campaign, it's always a military slang he's using. And that's not a bad thing, no, but that's actually quite good, because it basically allows us more personality for the characters. Now we do know that Apex characters all have different personalities and are basically from different parts of the world. Now I'm not really sure where Viper's coming from, he might be American, just by the way he talks, but for me personally, I really do enjoy that for this personality, he's just someone that's really dedicated to the job. Yes, he's a mercenary, but he's also a soldier. He genuinely knows what he's up against. And the fact that in his mission, in his, that one part of the campaign that where we actually fight him, you can actually see how dedicated he is. The fact that we defeated his North Star, and then his North Star comes back for revenge, to try and to destroy us overall shows how dedicated of a soldier he is. And it would be really great if he could be introduced back in the game in some way or form, maybe as a simulacrum, as an idea. But anyways, enough about my thoughts about Viper, let's go into the main loadout because this is what you guys are after. Now for the class, I decided to go with the Pulse Blade. Now this is quite obvious because this is what the general class of Viper is. Now his helmet is something that was from I believe the beta test of Titanfall 2 but it can't be accessed anymore. So we, so we have to go with the standard just the pulse blade body. Now this is the body I can currently see on Viper and I thought okay might as well just go with the whole Monty with him. It suits him quite fine, it looks nice. I can't exactly get the exact colours for him. So that's something you can always play around with. But the pulse blade also allows me to locate where enemies are on the minimap, so it basically allows me to always be on the go and always know where enemies may or might be going to. It allows me and my friendlies to be aware of my surroundings at all time. The primary now, I'm going to give you two choices, you can either go with the car or the vault. Now the car is relatively good, it has good damage output and it has a good ammo capacity, so it basically allows you to net a number of kills within quick succession. It's also great when you either ADS or hit fire the weapon. So it's kind of a multi-tool in one. Except for the fact that it's not exactly that great at long distances. At longer distances you'll be looking at maybe killing people at within 9 to 10 bullets. So it's not generally that great. But in close to medium range engagements you're gonna have a swell of time using this weapon. In the meantime if you don't want to use a car you can always use a vault. Now the vault did get a buff but he didn't get a buff to the point of where it's back to a, you know, really viable tool. You know, one of those top 10 or top 3 SMGs to go ahead and use. Now, the Vault is good in close range and medium range engagements. And it can absolutely drop an opponent there and then. It's the moment when you start drifting out, I say around, say 10 to 15 meters. But that's when your weapon starts to get a bit shaky. Your recoil starts to kick in and it becomes incredibly hard to try to land a final shot. I found that when I'm using the vault at long range engagements that I shouldn't really be you know, engaging, 9 times out of 10 I'll get the opponent to about say 2 or 1% of health and my shots will not all land, my final shot will not land on that opponent and I'll get killed. So I recommend that the way you use this weapon, use it in close range to medium range engagements. And I also recommend that you try the ADS with the weapon as well because I find that ADSing with the bolt you feel a bit more accurate compared to when you hit fire. But that's just from my experience. The secondary now is going to be the Mozambique. Mozambique is a great little secondary weapon because it allows you to mop up kills there, here and there. And it also allows you to one shot opponents as long as you land a headshot. And it also does travel a bit as well. In close to medium range engagement, you'll always have a good chance and a good fighting chance against opponents. In fact, you won't even have to use your primary in certain situations. Your Mozambique is that powerful to where it can actually, you know, generally take on one-on-one -on -one opponents. However, I don't recommend that you rely on it too much. 
your anti-titan weapon now is going to be either the thunderbolt or the charge rifle. The thunderbolt is great for boosting up your boost meter and your titan meter at a relatively good speed. I only recommend that you use this weapon if you know you could be going up against a group of titans that are all in closed areas. And that's quite a lot, so you could probably go ahead and use the weapon a lot. However, at the same time, if you don't want to use the Thunderbolt, you can always go use the Charge Rifle. Don't use the Charge Hack, because that makes the shots more weaker. Just use the normal shots on the weapon, as it does more damage. And make sure that when you're using the Charge Rifle, that you're aiming at the main weak points of the Titan. Doing so will basically allow you to damage the Titan relatively quickly, and it also gives you a nice little boost to your charge meter for your Titan and your boost meter. Your ordinance now is Gravity Star. Gravity Star I find is a kind of a tricky ordinance to use because in most in most engagements you can throw this and for some reason players will run to it like honey and it will allow you to net a number of kills as it allows you and your friendlies to throw projectiles and all that to be even more accurate. At the same time though, I find that using the Gravity Star is also quite risky because depending on where you throw it, if the enemy doesn't run into it and they see you and you start shooting in, that, in their direction, your rounds won't hit the enemy, it will hit the Gravity Star. And that will basically mean that in that situation, you're dead or if you're quick enough, you can, re you can react quickly enough to get out of that situation. It's, it's a very debatable ordinance. I only suggest you use the I only suggest you use this ordinance either if you're going up against grunts or if you're going up against a bunch of players that are in one area and you have a clear shot of taking them out. In enclosed areas where you know you don't have a lot of room to maneuver, I suggest you try to be aware of your surroundings and don't use it in enclosed areas unless you know you have a clear shot. Your Titan now is going to be North Star. That's quite obvious. I decided to either go with the Viper Fusters and Enhanced Payload. Now you can choose either two. Enhanced Payload basically allows you to do extra damage against pilots in, in small enclosed areas and Titans as well. If that's not your thing, you can always go with Viper Fusters. That basically allows you to maneuver in the air much quicker and such. But that's very debatable depending on the map. If you're playing on the Homestead, that's generally what I would say you go with. If you're not playing on the home steed, I really suggest you try to look at other maps that are more suitable for more close in close engagement perks. So enhanced payload will probably come in much better. Your pilot kit now is going to be healthy generation and hover. I'm trying to stick with the theme of everything fitting in to Viper and Northstar interlinking with each other. So I want to make it so that Viper is the type of person that always stays in the air and is someone that likes to get the surprise on people, you know, someone that you can see in a strafing run. You'll come in, you call him in, he comes in, kills all these opponents for you, clears a path for you, and then, you know, he comes in again, repeats his process to basically dominate the team. And now your boost is going to be the battery backup. Battery backup is just only there to allow you a bit extra defense because using North Star, you're incredibly squishy and you're also at risk of being hunted down and taken on by Ronin players, Ion players, or even Monarch players. Now when it comes down to general gameplay of playing Viper, I see him being a type of person that does not hold back. He's the type of person that will go into the game and he would generally you know, be the top player of the team. He's someone that you would fear to go up against. He's someone that is cunning but is smart. Someone likes to surprise the enemy out of nowhere and basically push the enemy to the point where they can't generally fight back. So this is kind of how I like to interlink it with the loadout. Your pulse blade now will basically allow you to locate where enemies are at all times. This basically also allows your friendlies to know where the enemies are at all times as well. So they always have eyes on the map and always know how to engage. So in case you get gunned down by a group of enemies your friendlies will see on the minimap or on the map where the enemies are and they can generally just rush the area and dominate them some more. Your car or your vault is basically good for close range and medium range engagements. Your car is really great as long as you aim for headshots. Now you don't have to aim for headshots but I recommend they aim for headshots because it allows you to kill pilots much quickly. 
And with the way, and with his magazine size being around, I believe, 30, this basically means that you can take on a bunch of players there and then. You could probably take on around 3 to 4 players before you get killed. At the same time, if you don't want to use a car, you can always use the Vault. Now, the Vault is a very tricky weapon. Like I said before, if you ADS with the Vault, you'll probably have a much better chance in close to medium range engagements. If you hip fired weapon, I find that it doesn't really work within my favour. But that's just me personally. Now, if you land a headshot with the Vault, I tend to find that you kill opponents much more quicker compared to the car. So out of the two, it's really debatable of where you want to go. The car is kind of universal. You see a lot more players using this weapon compared to the Vault. But if you're someone that enjoys the Vault because of the way it feels and the way it fires, and you like a good challenge, go by all means go with the Vault. When everything is going as smooth and planned, you kind of then want to be prepared to drop your Titan. Now I suggest that you don't drop your Titan in just of yet, I suggest that you wait for your friendlies to drop theirs in, because one, like I said, Northstar is the type of person that likes to come in and do a ton of damage to the enemy team. So I don't suggest you drop it in straight away, because you can do a ton of damage, but at the risk of being exposed, and at the risk of the enemy team trying to hunt you down. What I would suggest is that you kind of play aggressive, push the enemy team to the point of where they can't make major engagements. You know, make it so that your friendlies can drop their titans first. And then once your friendlies have dropped the titans, say maybe two or three, drop your titan. And then that's when you can pretty much get more aggressive. Because at this point here, the enemy team are generally going to come in and start dropping their titans. But at a, on the leaderboard, it's going to be kind of too late because, because the point margin is going to be too big. You could be in the, say, 200s, the enemy team could be in the 50s, depending on how bad and how much you push them. It kind of sounds like you're being a sweaty player, and that's generally how it is. You have to be really serious when you come down this loadout. You need to be like the top player, the one player that your whole teammates want to rely on the most. So to do this, you need to be really aggressive. You need to push the enemy team to the brink of extinction. And then when everything's going fine and smooth, you know, drop your Titan in. Dominate some more, right there, you're the winner. But say on the other hand that you don't manage to do that. Say on the other hand the enemy team is actually winning because they're actually quite skilled and actually good. Then this is where you kind of want to change up your tactic. This is where you want to try to maximize your best at destroying the enemy AI. If you're in a situation where your team's being pushed to, to the point of where they're dropping the titans in and the point margin isn't that big but you can see that the point margin is getting steeper and steeper for you I would suggest that you drop into your North Star if you have your North Star available you drop into your North Star you use your battery backup get yourself an extra shield and you focus on the AI grunts if you don't have your North Star or your battery backup ready whatsoever Focus on just on the main AI. Use everything within your gear to maximize and destroy the AI. Because destroying AI basically allows you points. And it also comes to your boost meter as well. It may not be a lot, but it's still viably useful at the end of the day. Use your gravity star to grab in a bunch of enemies. Because this way it allows you to drop enemies very, very quickly. And it's also quite safe as well. Because you throw it into an area that you know what enemies are. And they all pop up. You can take a pop shot out of them from a window or from the rooftop where you're out of where you're out of line and out of engagements. And then the moment you do get enough points, then go ahead and drop your North Star. Then try and be a supporter. Rather than trying to push for the leaderboard and being aggressive, try and support your teammates by taking pop shots at say other AI, at pilots that may be on the rooftop or camping. Use your enhanced payload, if that's the perk you decide to go with, to take out enemies that are in enclosed areas. And take out titans from long distances, such as Legion and Ion, as they can become a major problem and major pest on the battlefield. If you want more bigger maps though, use your Viper Thrusters, as Viper Thrusters allow you to stay in the air and dodge shots much more quicker. But it's very debatable using that, because by doing so, if the enemy sees you and knows when you're going to do it again, they can do a lot of damage to you because you can't cancel it there and then. 
So I would really suggest that if you are going to use the Viper Fusters, use it in a situation where you know you have cover and you know you can take pop shots, but make sure you always relocate so that you always have the enemy team guessing where you are and that way you can do enough damage. So overall, Viper, a very serious, very dedicated soldier on the battlefield, someone that you highly want to rely upon. If you're someone that is great at being an MVP and you know how to maximize your pulse blade, you know how to use your car or your vault to take down opponents, and you know how to use your pilot kit and your North Star and even your gravity star and everything within your arsenal to destroy and push the enemy team back, this is generally for you. But if you're not, this is the start. So that is the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means, leave a dislike. I understand, and I know what to do in the nearby future. So once again, guys, thank you all for watching, and I do hope to see you again soon.